Mike, with your defensive background and Dean Peace, plus the way your, your defense has been playing the last couple of weeks, uh, how much does that maybe help when you're facing the challenge of trying to defend the Ravens and, and what they've done offensively? You think Dean and I could, could stop him, huh? Well, that's where the, the experience in the No, I meant just from, it's, right? it's just such a – I mean, it's, it's, it's hard. You know, it's discipline and um, ability, you know, a lot of ability, a ton of ability. It's a great scheme. Uh, but with any scheme, it's, it's never as important as the players uh, executing the scheme. Uh, we're we're going to try to do what we do every week and just give our guys as much preparation as we possibly can. Um, show them, teach them, explain to them, work things on the field, uh, work drills. Um, you know, try to find the guys that they have as go-to players, um, what their um, – you know, favorite plays are, and then obviously there's going to be new plays um, that, that show up in the game, and hopefully the things that we're doing are sound enough uh, to allow our players to, to go and execute. Can you talk about how difficult it is to simulate Jackson's ball fakes and his speed in the open field. How much can Marcus's RPO background help you prepare the, on the scout team? Well, that? we'll need good speed today. Um, that's something that's critical, um, which, which may um, – you know, they're, they're, they're doing a great job, you know, but, you know, 128 to 31 in the first quarter, you know, my guess is that that speed looks a lot different um, during the game than what it did uh, in practice. And so hopefully we can get that speed and get that look as close to, to what we are going to see uh, in the game. It, it won't be the same, but it's going to be, I think, pretty good with what Marcus can do and what... Um, hopefully the look that we can give our guys. So when, when you face a, a team like this with kind of a unique offense, do you find yourself changing things more than you usually would, or are you just, you know, you try and stay as close as you, as you can to uh, every week? Um, you know, we do things that we will probably do. There'll be new things. There'll be things that we'll, you know, have. There's going to be a lot of game plan, you know, game adjustments that is going to take place. Um, hey, this is something that's a little new or, you know, hey, this isn't working, and you know, we'll have to have to adjust and, and make sure that we're all ready um, as coaches and players to adjust as you know things come up in the game. Mike Lamar's skill set being as unique as it is, you see when, as a draft prospect how difficult a scout he was because not a lot of offenses necessarily fit what he was he was going to do. Well, hopefully. Um, when we have good players here, um, talented players, we ask them to do things that take advantage of their, their talent. I think that that's something that's uh, critical as a, as a coach, uh, that you find out what the guys that you have do well, uh, and then you try to ask them to, to do it well. Uh, and then things that they don't do well, you, you try to improve. Um, you know, Again, they, they had a vision for, for the player, and that's what John and I try to do. When we evaluate players coming out in the draft, free agency, during the season, you know, what's the vision for this player? What does this player do well? Uh, what does this player need to, you know, what are the areas of focus? You know, so I'm sure they had a, a, a vision of what, um, you know, Lamar was going to be for them. For as much as they blitz, is, is it more complicated? And uh, what kind of work ahead for your well, That's a great scheme, you know, great scheme, um, great players. You know, aggressive play caller. Uh, you know, Wink's, Wink's aggressive. That's who he wants to be. And, and again, those schemes, you know, they should never get overemphasized more than the, than the players. You know, they have very good players. Secondary is very good. I mentioned Humphreys and his ability to, to not only play tight coverage, but also if a guy catches a ball on him, um, he better protect it because he's looking to, to knock it out and is, is very well taught, and, and he executes that technique very well. Um, Judon is, is developed into a very, very good player. Um, the inside guys are next to impossible to move. Pierce and Williams, you know, Wormley uh, has got great length. Uh, they're, they're fast inside. They're, they're under, you know, they're not the biggest linebackers, but they're fast. They're run. They're, they're productive. So uh, all that with, with a good scheme is, it makes it hard to handle. How have your backs been at, at pickup and, and how much is on them in, in a situation like this? Well, with pressure, um, you know, when they're, you know, they'll be in pre they'll be in pickup this week. It'll be, 
you know, important that we identify um, who we have to block and, and that we, we do everything that we can do with our technique to, to get them blocked. Every week, I know it's your, it's your plan to do every week, but how important is it to sustain drives to keep them their offense off the field this week? Um, you know, they're, they're leading the league in time of possession. You know, it's something that they, you know, they have long drives and they, they keep, the, keep the ball, and defensively, they're not out there very long. So, you know, either we got to keep it a long time or we got to score. Um, you know. With your starting guards, Saffold and Nate Davis, how have you seen them change and improve as the, as the season has progressed here? I think the whole unit's improved. You know, I think that as we continue to build confidence in what we're doing and have success, um, you know, every, I think everybody's improved. I think that's the message to the team. It's been the teams that have continued to improve throughout the season are still here playing and preparing for games. Uh, and maybe the ones that didn't, you know, aren't playing. So I would say that they, they've improved. I think that the rest of the offense and hopefully most of the players on the team have improved. The same thing. Was, it, was there a matter of familiarity, do you think, after so many years with the... You'd have, that'd be a great question for Roger. It seems like with all the, the talk about that Ravens offense, the offensive line is lost within it, but they really do a good job reestablishing the line of scrimmage. What, what are your thoughts? Well, there's not much penetrate. You know what I mean? They cover guys up. They make sure that they do a great job of making sure that there's no penetration. Uh, when you read it out of the pistol, it takes a, you know, a second longer or half a second longer, whatever it is. Uh, and, and they're not giving up any penetration. They're not, you know, there's, there's a guy that they're reading, uh, and that's the quarterback's job. But you know, there's not a whole lot of penetration on the backside. Uh, if people are trying to um, create a new line of scrimmage or you know, jam someone underneath, uh, they, they've done a great job of picking that up. Stanley's turned into a phenomenal uh, left tackle. Great mover, very good length, rarely get around him. Uh, obviously, you know, Orlando's a, a massive mover. Um, much was made out of um, you know, him coming out, but, but he's turned into a a people mover on the right side. Um, you know, he just he covers you up, and you know he'll knock guys ten yards off the ball. Those guys weren't necessarily drafted for this system. How impressive that they've transitioned into moving the way that they move and what they're doing. I, again, I don't know what system they were drafted for. Um, offensive linemen. There's two types of run. Um, there's zone scheme and gap scheme, and. I hope that whatever system guys come out, you know, I mean, they're going to zone right, they're going to zone left, or they're going to, you know, double team somebody. Uh, they're, they're they're good players. They would be good players in any scheme, um, and that's uh, that's the challenge. You know, I mean, there's an example. I think that you know, it's not all zone read, and so you know, there was an example showing the team that you know there was a player that maybe had gotten red. Um, over there by Orlando Brown a few plays in a row, and he was kind of just standing there waiting to be read another time, and he, he rolls off the ball and, and knocks him about 10 yards off the, off the ball. So I think that that's something that we have to be mindful for is that it's not always a zone read. I mean, it is. That's a large part of what they do, and they're successful, and they're very good at it. But not just standing there waiting you know, to get read and then get knocked 10 yards off the ball. 13. Go ahead, Kayla. You never ask questions. Well, I mean, I tried to let everybody else get them in, but I will <laughs> ask you a question, Mike Rabel. Um, will you speak on just the tight ends and how they use them even more so? Yeah, the, the leading players? targets, leading catches. They're talented. They're athletic. You know, I, I would uh, you know, imagine, you know, Ozzie had been there, have his stamp on that, loving that position. Um, they, they've drafted them every year. That's something that's important to that organization, guys that can block. Uh, guys that can get open, guys that catch the ball, that have you know good play strength. Um, Andrews is certainly a um, you know, he's the leading target. He's got great ability to to extend and a very good catch radius. Um, you know, with Hurst is a player that really can can play at the line of scrimmage. He can flex out. He he outran a you know, DB in, in Buffalo. You know, so that they've got you know, three very good weapons there, and and they play him a lot together all on the field at the same time. With all the 
12 and 13 personnel that they run. Have most teams try to defend them in base or do they have to go sub package because of Lamar's speed? You know, I think it's based on who you have each and every week. Um, some teams have played sub based on a lot of things that go into that down and distance. Um, you know, and, and you'll have to be ready for, you know, if somebody goes down, maybe nickel's not available. You, know, you have to play base versus 11 or um, nickel versus 12. When you mentioned uh, Dean earlier, just overall, what has he meant uh, to this team, to, to your coaching staff, and to the players that he coaches? Well, Dean cares, obviously, about his players uh, deeply. He cares about their success, puts a lot of time in. He's uh, very good at his job. He's seen and, and done a lot in, in this league. Um, very experienced. Um, so he's meant a, he has meant a lot to, to us in this organization. Um, I'm excited to, to watch him you know, prepare, uh, help prepare, prepare our team and you know, ultimately coach and call a game on Saturday night. Khalif that final hurdle or is he still? Khalif is cleared. Okay. Cleared con concussion protocol. Uh, Looking at the Ravens games this year, that Buffalo did a decent job, maybe kind of slowing Baltimore anyway. Did, in looking at that game, did they do anything particularly well um, in, in slowing those guys down? I thought they they played good defense. I thought they swarmed to the ball. I thought they, um, you know, were physical. They they played with good technique. There's a lot of things to like. Um, you know, they just gave up a big one, unfortunately, um, you know, down the field, catch and run situation. And uh, you know, they played on a short field sometimes, but uh, you know, there's a lot to like when, when Buffalo plays defense. They're well coached. They have, they have great players. Is there something that could be said about the importance of kind of cutting the field in half with Lamar and just like making him read? Just I mean, I think that in in the in the pass game, are you talking about in a run game? Every, when he has the ball in his hand, I would say that everybody is at the point of attack. And that was a message to the team that when he has the ball in his hand. Everyone is at the point of attack. It could start over here. They could read this guy. He could go back inside. He could follow the running back. He could come back over here. Like, th there's a design to the play, and then he just is like, I'm going to go make a play. So I think that we're all at the point of attack, the 11 guys that are out there uh, when he has the ball. Um, you just did a miracle 20 years ago today. Were you watching it when it happened? Uh, what was 20 years ago? What, what year was it? 1999 season. January 8, 20, 2000. So I would have just finished my fourth year, third year, maybe. I, I don't think we made the playoffs in Pittsburgh. I, I mean, I remember it. I mean, I remember. I don't remember that I was watching the game. So, I mean, I know that that was a huge play in this organization. Uh, it's a well-executed play. You don't go – and that's just another one of those situations where you, know, you practice it every Saturday and, um, you know, you make it go – a whole career without ever using it. Uh, and then then now all of a sudden you get the opportunity to use it and, and you never know in one of those situations that you practice in training camp and on Saturday walkthroughs uh, is going to come and you're going to need it. How's optimism, on, how's optimism on Jay on? I'm sorry? How's your optimism on Jay on? Uh, we'll see what he looks like at practice.